Okay, guys, welcome back. This is SmartHelping.com. We're looking at preferred returns. I've done a second version of the model that I did yesterday. So this is pretty nice. I was researching some different things that can happen. And again, these are can vary between deal to deal. But I did some generic um, assumptions of catch-up equity or catch-up return if your um, pref return was... It basically in shortfall essentially if if the amount available to distribute um, was less than the preferred return then you know what happens well I've added some options here so let's look at number one option we can decide to start to add the shortfall to the investor equity or not if no that means um, it's basically a non compounding pref return and again um, we're assuming the preferred return is just for the uh, investor's equity. Uh, so, if we do no for add shortfall to investor equity, that means no matter how much unpaid accrued um, returns have happened, we still keep basing the annual interest, the preferred return rate, on the initial whatever the equity amount is. So you can see here, this is 135, 135, 135, even though we are getting unpaid. However, what will now happen is once there is cash available, it will pay that shortfall down first before any other cash is split with the profit share. So you can see here in year one, we only had 50,000. So the preferred return is 135. That's a shortfall of 85. So we, we only could pay 50,000 out to the investors. Now 85,000 is accrued. Let's go to year two. We have another prep return 135, only 50,000. So another 85,000 accrued. We now got 170,000 in returns that have not been paid. Um, the equity basis is still 1.3 million because we're not um, compounding. And now we wait. So year three happens. Now look, there's 250,000. So this is over the prep return. So now we can pay the prep return. And there's an extra 115,000 to pay down the shortfall that the accrued shortfall. So now the accrued shortfall is 170. We're paying 115. So now the basis for next year four, when we do another set of calculations. Let's say we made another 250 um, of distri distributions. We pay off the rest of the accrued balance of the shortfall. So 55,000. We pay the the pref return of 1.135,000, and now we have a remaining amount of 60 that we can split um, based on whatever percentage you, you're going to share between the investor sponsor here. And you see that's 48 and 12 of the 60. So this is basically covers almost anything that can happen with these, but who knows what kind of deal you might think of. But um, this now is complete in my opinion and it's really helpful now let's look at let's look what happens so you still have the option to start clean each year see how this is no this means that we have the accrual if you put yes here look at no accrual it basically reset every year you have 135,000 in prep return if you don't make it it's okay nothing accrues you just pay out what you can and nobody else you know the sponsor is not going to get anything same with year two, and then year three, when we finally get some cash, you pay off the prep return, and then nothing is split of the, you know, loss it, or the uh, the shortfalls. That doesn't matter. We'll just do what's at left after the 135, which there's 115,000 left. So you see, split at 92,000 investors, 23 to sponsor. Um, so you can start clean each year just by toggling that. Um, most of the times that's going to be a no though and you're going to accrue now here watch what happens if we want to compound you'll see this 1.35 is going to compound based on the accrued unpaid equity and now their prefer return is going to go up and then all the calculus so look at this if we go yes here you can now see look at the pre the total equity is going up and up and then finally when it gets paid down here the balance drops and it finally gets back down to what it was before the shortfalls. But while it was higher, you can see the pref return was higher and that all counts towards the total shortfall that gets added to the next year and added to interest. So those are pretty much, you know, if I looked on a bunch of um, 
Sice had talked about this. I couldn't find any scenarios um, that were the this covers the most common set of scenarios that were um, displayed. Now there's other things like preferred equity. Now preferred equity is completely different than preferred return. Preferred equity means you have a right to get that equity back, um, and it depends on exactly how the deal set up. But if it's you know if it's truly uh, preferred equity with a, a true preferred return, then the investors get, or AKA the limited partners, um, get all of their, get their preferred return first, and then they also get their 100% of their equity paid back before any profit is split. Now, once their equity is paid back, then you start splitting things. Now that, there's a lot of different ways that can work. Um, I mean, you can have, you can have pari passu where you've got some splits happening where it's not all the investors equity and paid back first it's you know you're splitting the the preferred return between the investor and sponsor equity and then you're also returning um the sponsor and investors equity based on um the amount of amount they put in and then once that's fully repaid, then you can split profits after that. That's just, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but this covers all the most common ways for a preferred return, which a preferred return is different than preferred equity. A return, a preferred return is a claim on returns. It has nothing to do with the actual amount of, like you don't get paid out this equity. This is just to, used to determine um, what the preferred return is going to be. And then, like I said, I did all this stuff. So you can do compounding, not compounding, start clean, not start clean every um, year. And then there's some share of profits after um, the pref return is taken care of uh, for the sponsor. So anyway, that's just an improvement to the model. It's still, if you want it to work like it did in the previous video, all you have to do is hit, um, well, yes or no on the shortfall. Um, being included and then yes or no on the the clean it would be a no it would be a yes here to start clean every year um and then if you're adding shortfall you would it if you it doesn't matter um if this is starting clean then it starts clean there's no addition so this is actually a tad different the other model even if you started clean each year it was adding equity to the investor equity balance to get a new preferred return I actually did not see that happening, and that's why I decided to make this updated version so that it's actually more um, in line with um, readings and, and different um, things that I've I've seen people talk about with this whole distribution. So there you have it. Now, if you do go ahead and purchase this, the preferred return version two is what you will get um, when I email it to you or if you download it. Um, through any of the vendor sites once I actually get it up over there. This will be the version you get. It's the most robust version. It accounts for everything. Um, all the logic is right here. Um, the checks always work. If we start playing with this, um, you can see at the bottom here, always there's always you know, the total sponsor return and, and, and inflows and outflows plus the investors inflows and outflows always equal the actual only amount that's available. And in this version, we just went through it. I just made the investor part very, uh, uh, more flexible and more uh, have better ability to compound, not compound, um, and add the shortfall, like add catch up so that you actually pay unpaid accruals um, of preferred returns that were not met in previous years. So I think this is a pretty pretty solid starting point for um, a lot of people just to get their hands on it get to get a feel for how this how this works and what kind of um, splits look like all right this is smarthelping.com update of preferred return next up and i don't know if i'm going to do this anytime soon but the next thing i want to do is going to be a preferred equity version which is completely different logic than this so we'll see what happens see you on the next one